More than 10 years ago, Doug Hanahan and Bob Weinberg started discussing exactly what it is that makes a cancer cell cancerous. They came up with six key features, called them the hallmarks of cancer, and published a paper that went on to become phenomenally successful. They've since updated it, and here at the ESMO Congress in Vienna, Doug Hanahan gave the keynote lecture. I caught up with him and asked him how it all came about. Bob Weinberg and I had, had never really worked together, and yet, and we were very different people, but somehow we complemented each other, and it was just a terrific uh, collab, you know, intellectual collaboration. And so we spent a day together, and so we started talking about cancer science, and we started talking about the complexity, and we started discussing that perhaps there was an underlying commonality uh, to all this complexity. And during the course of the day, this idea gelled that there was a, a small uh, set of, of acquired capabilities, so-called hallmarks of cancer, that were perhaps common uh, to many forms of cancer. What were the six hallmarks? The first one is the most obvious one, and that is uh, essentially uh, uh, stimulating uh, cell division that uh, the cancer is, a, is fundamentally a proliferative disease and the first hallmark is essentially putting your foot on the accelerator with growth signals of one form or another to tell cells to grow and divide. Second hallmark is really taking away the breaks that, uh, that most normal cells have a series of breaks that are meant to prevent continuing proliferation which under normal circumstances is transitory. And these are manifest, these breaks are often called tumor suppressors because the breaks suppress uh, tumor growth and tumors find one way or another to circumvent or abrogate many of these breaks during the course of their development. The third hallmark reflects another variation on that theme which is that normal cells have adopted uh, a, a strategy for, for programmed suicide, or programmed cell death, that if they perceive or their neighbors perceive that, the, that they're behaving aberrantly, uh, signals can be sent uh, that cause the cell to die. And in particular, uh, aberrant proliferation can evoke those signals so that most tumors, have, uh, we, we believe, have learned how to limit uh, this program cell death of which there are several variants on the theme we now appreciate but it seems a general property that that uh, cancer cells learn how to, to limit if not completely eliminate this propensity for for cell suicide the uh, the fourth one uh, is it reflects yet another check and balance on uh, a continuous chronic proliferation, and that is the, the counting mechanism uh, embedded in the telomeres of our chromosomes, which upon every cell division get shorter. And stem cells in the, and developing cells have uh, mechanisms, principally telomerase, uh, to preserve the ends of telomeres and to give themselves uh, more extensive replicative capacity. And what we now appreciate is that most tumors figure out how to preserve their telomeres so that they are not stopped dead in their tracks by this uh, propensity uh, to uh, block proliferation after a certain number of divisions have happened. So that's the fourth hallmark. The fifth one then goes beyond the cancer cell to look at um, uh, the, the tumor as an organ and it was uh, long appreciated that most normal organs require vascularization and so too do tumors and, and therefore most tumors turn on the growth of new blood vessels, the process of antigenesis. The sixth one is really the co-option of a developmental capability for migration, so-called invasion and metastasis, because again, ca cancers don't invent new things. They co-opt processes, functions that are used in development in normal homeostasis, but they per sub subvert them for their own purposes. So again, during development, there are, uh, the cells invade across tissue beds and cells migrate uh, long distances. Uh, 
And so there's a, there is clearly a program in all cells for invasion and metastasis. And uh, the notion was that this again, uh, there were many ways to, uh, to, to, to regulate uh, this uh, capability, but that most tumors, one way or another, were turning on a capability for invasion and metastasis. So those were the six hallmarks in, two, in the year 2000. So if we fast forward to 2011 and the updated paper, those six hallmarks and your framework has remained basically intact. You know, interestingly, during the, the, uh, the, the subsequent decade, it was clear that no, no major data or concepts came forward that argued that these were not general. I mean, there are tumors that are not invasive. There are tumors that are very poorly vascularized. But most tumors that are, that are problematic have invasive or metastatic properties. They have antigenic properties and they have ways to preserve their telomeres. So there's, there was really no um, you know, general uh, um, counter arguments to the proposition that these were, uh, were generic. And in fact, I think that the popularity of the, of the perspective was that most people actually thought this was probably reasonably correct. There were a couple of new hallmarks then. Well, the, uh, one of the, the most common things that happened during that decade was people uh, sending us, Bob Weinberg and I, messages telling us at conferences that we'd forgotten something <laughs> and that the, the six were fine, but what about this and that? And the first one was the reprogramming of cellular energetics and metabolism, that uh, cancer cells are dividing very rapidly, whereas the cells of origin from which they came were generally quiescent in tissues doing different jobs in support of the tissue and the organism. Cancer cells need to grow rapidly, they need oxygen, they need energy, they need biomaterials, and it became increasingly clear that uh, that, that, that cancer cells reprogram their energy metabolism. And so we put it out as an emerging hallmark to sort of, and, and, and explain that while we were persuaded it was very important, we were still a little unsure about how separable it was from the loss of growth controls and from driving prolifer prolifer proliferation, namely the, the two core hallmarks. There are now data coming out that suggest that at least in some tumors there are mutations that affect metabolism that don't affect cell division. And so I think in the end it probably will stand as a discrete hallmark, but, but whether it will be general to, that, dis, that separability will be general to many forms of cancer or selective for a few is still unclear. And so. In, in, but, but, it, but it certainly is, in terms of understanding how the machine works, uh, arguably a hallmark. Is that the same debate then about evading the immune response? Correct. This has again been a very controversial field. There is evidence uh, in, in animal models for so-called immune surveillance, but the data uh, in humans is is more complex. For example, transplant patients that are chronically immunosuppressed, HIV patients, do not have increased incidences of the major forms of human cancer. What they have is increased incidences of virally induced cancers. On the other hand, there's provocative data suggesting that the density of cytotoxic T cells uh, in a tumor actually is a, is a good prognostic factor and, and, and says that you'll live longer. And so w our feeling was that the immune system is actually impacting tumors in different tumor types, maybe at different stages in the development and progression of cancers, but that the immune system was a factor, was a barrier to uh, the development of at least some kinds of, of cancer and a barrier to be circumvented and therefore arguably a capability of, of successful tumors was to evade whatever challenges the immune system erected. But again, we, we, we posed it as an emerging hallmark because of this question of generality. It's very clear 
in some forms of human cancer that the immune system is a barrier, but it's not clear that it's a barrier in all forms. What applications are there from the hallmarks? Do you see them informing drug development, for example? There are targeted therapies aimed at all of the hallmarks and, and each of them individually and some hit a couple of them, but, but there, are, there are specific targeted therapies for many of them, which is very exciting, but the sobering reality is that most targeted therapies don't work very long. They work for a while and then uh, the tumor figures out a way around that. So that's just like the, the barriers that, that, that resulted in the initial hallmarks, is that the, again, therapy is another barrier, along with the developmental barriers they face, and tumors are mutable, they're adaptable, and they figure out a way around it. So that's been the reality of targeted therapies, that they're, they are not the miracle cures that one might have fantasized about. So the hypothesis is, and this is strictly a hypothesis, is that perhaps if one targeted multiple hallmarks at the same time, that one would present so many barriers that a tumor couldn't figure out how to get around all of them sort of simultaneously, and therefore could really be impaired uh, in terms of its ability to progress. So the hallmarks of cancer have stood the test of time and continue to provide a straightforward framework in the increasingly complex field of cancer. And with thanks to Doug Hanahan, that's it for this month's EJC News Focus.